because if they're texting all the time and then they try to use that type of text language, children are spending hours of their day texting and they think that is formal communication. No, they don't. No, the kids don't think texts are formal communication. I'll go and ask a kid right now, Alan. Prove this to me. Do they think that shortening words to, like, the letters U and C in a text message is formal communication and would they write that in an essay? You're f***ing lying. That's just a lie. And it's a stupid one because who cares? Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. First of all, I must apologise for the state of everything. I, what's this? Blank wall? Me? Blank wall? With my love of random posters and pictures? Some of you will already be aware I am in the middle of moving house, so my setup and my home and my life is somewhat chaotic at the moment. This will probably actually be the last video I ever record in this house. Content is a little bit sporadic at the moment because of the moving, half of my time is spent putting things in boxes around work, so it's <laughs> That is why I'm super grateful to Gabby for sending me this video on Instagram, because this is a nice short video that I think will be fun to react to. I haven't watched it yet, so I'm going in fresh, exciting. If you ever want to recommend content to me, by the way, Twitter, Instagram, do it. I love it. It's awesome. So today I get a break from the packing to check out a video called Top 7 Ways Satan is Attacking Our World and Our Youth Today. My favourite thing about that is that one of the most like basic tips when you're making uh, content, especially for YouTube, is to try like Top 7. This channel is The Beat by Alan Parr. He's also got videos titled like, you need to do this one thing, and it's a very like stereotypical, this is how you get attention on a YouTube video, and I just think it's always really funny to me. I don't know why, because it makes perfect sense, and it's not a criticism at all, I just think it's really funny when you combine like, Satan is coming for our children with like, good SEO practice for YouTube, I don't know, it tickles me. So yeah, top seven ways, which implies there are many more ways, but he's worked out the best ways. I just, the top seven is just such a funny, the whole, I have so many questions, like how on earth does he know what Satan is doing? How does he know that it's Satan that is doing these things? How does he know that this is Satan's top seven things? What if Satan's number one thing, right? Here's a theory, okay? What if Satan's number one method for attacking our world is by sneaking into the minds of the kind of people who post videos called top seven ways Satan is attacking our world. And that's a distraction. It's seven things Satan would never do to keep us off the scent of what he's really up to. My point being that you could say this about sort of anything. I can see he's got another video titled five things Christian women need to stop doing now. If you're doing this one thing, you may not be saved. This whole channel intrigues me. I'm super fascinated by this. Okay. So this, I'm guessing this is Alan Parr, just because that's what the channel is titled and all of the thumbnails feature this uh, one person. So this, I'm guessing, is Alan. He's taken his glasses off, so it's deeply serious. I can't do that to mirror him. It would be a very funny bit if I took that, if I took mine off to mirror him, but then I wouldn't be able to see the video, so we're gonna have to not do that. I like his mug that says, got truth. I'd quite like one of those with an inverted cross just to be obtuse. So, top seven ways Satan is attacking our world and our youth today. Very common fear tactic, especially in lots of different branches of Christianity. They're coming for the children. I, yeah. The comments make me kind of sad. As a 17 year old who's scared for their generation because of the devil. I just hate these fear tactics that are so common. I spoke to a, a born again Christian a couple of years ago now, and I got the, well, what if question, you know, the, well, what if, what if I'm right? What if Christianity is true? Do you want to burn in hell forever? And it's like, man, imagine being taught that as a child. That's so, well, I mean, most of us probably don't have to imagine, but it's so fucked. What a fucked way to live your life. It's just capitalizing on that fear, just out of the, if there's a chance that you could, you, the people you love are going to burn in hell. Just, just, I hate these fear tactics and this using Satan as this sort of invented scapegoat is very classic. So I imagine I'm going to have a problem with this, but let's see what his top seven tactics are first. I'm kind of disappointed that I've already packed away my, um, my membership certificate for the Satanic Temple, because that would be very fun to have in the background of this video. Well, hey everyone, um, 
Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. I normally have tons of scripture in my videos, but today I just kind of want to share my heart a little bit. And um... Interesting start. Today we're not going to be sharing very much scripture. Curious to see where his information is coming from then. Um, just talk about an issue that's really been on my mind and on my spirit um, for quite some time, and that's the fact that I just believe that the enemy is really attacking our youth. Uh, he is in... It's so serious that it's filling up the screen in massive typography. Look at that, when I talk about, when I say the words fear tactics, this, th this screenshot is it. I don't need to provide an explanation because this chap has put THE ENEMY IS ATTACKING OUR YOUTH in all caps on the screen. Like, <laughs> that is making people listen and believe you just out of pure fear. Pure fear. He's not even using scripture, which obviously I would argue is not a valid source, but he's not even using that as a source today. Just fear. Intentional about going after this next generation. You know, the Bible does say that we are not to be ignorant of the schemes or the devices of the devil. And so while this video may not necessarily provide all of the answers to how the enemy is attacking our youth, I hope that in the very least, it will at least expose what the enemy is trying to do with this next generation so that hopefully we as parents and leaders and teachers and uh, youth leaders can at least have some clear idea of how to identify. What was that? Just Christian stock footage. <laughs> just, just so, so weird. That was just totally random. The activity of the enemy as it relates to our youth. So I want to list seven ways that I think the devil is trying to attack this next. Well, now hold on. The title says top seven ways. Is this just seven ways? Because I clicked on this video being assured that I would be told the top seven ways. I'm not interested in a random seven. These might be at the bottom of the list. False advertising. Next generation. And the first is with gender confusion. And I truly believe that the enemy is trying to destroy this next generation by confusing them to make them wonder what gender they are or who they identify. I'll let him finish before I dive into the gender confusion thing. But what's this? This ebook doesn't even relate to the point he's making. Download my free ebook, Improve Your Bible Study. It's just an advert that's popping up over his own video that doesn't have anything to do with what he's saying. How annoying. <laughs> as, and if he can do that, then he can destroy the nuclear family. If he destroys the family, he can ultimately destroy our communities. And so instead of me explaining it, I think this clip that I'm about to share really illustrates how confused this next generation is as a uh, If you experience any gender dysphoria, I apologize. It turns out it's the devil. It's the devil that causes dysphoria. So got that cleared up. Unfortunately, he doesn't really provide any solutions to that. Why is it that every big Christian channel that I look at, they've got trans issues. I think it's problematic to any time these people refer to trans people or people who are just, I don't know, this guy said gender confusion, people who are gender non-conforming, just anyone who isn't cis. I don't even, I don't know specifically what, this is a very vague you know, term that he's using. But it's it's always like the top of their concern list is like gender issues. The way to help children who are struggling with their gender identity is better education and access to good uh, healthcare and mental health support. Is it the devil that's making waiting lists for specialists really long? Is that the devil's doing? Or is that like a failing of the NHS? Like what, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very, it's such an easy fear tactic, you know, the like, especially if you're like a traditional Christian and he's like, he's holding up the nuclear family as the ideal. What if your child is different? What if your child, you know, isn't cis and straight? and doesn't get married and have two and a half children. You, the, the devil! It's the devil's fault and then the community will all fall apart. Like, shut up. <laughs> We're fine. Relates to this issue of gender. Check it out. How many genders are there? Um... God, I don't know, like... Stupid comedy music in the background just to make the people in this interview sound stupid, silly. That's manipulative, so don't like that. I identify as a guy, but if someone's going to be happier not following that binary thing, do you. How many genders are there? We're holding that up as how confused the, how confused the kids of today are. There was a young man being like, 
I identify as a guy, but if somebody doesn't want to be in the binary, then that's cool. That was the epitome of understanding and, like, acceptance and zero problems. How did that in any way highlight the issues of gender confusion? That was, like, such a nice... I just... Is it because of the deep, 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 deep music in the background? Fuck's sake. <laughs> There's a spectrum of genders you can't really say. Like an unlimited amount, you would say? Yeah. There are, like... Five, six, maybe. Six? Mm. What are those six? Um, uh, it's like male, female, transgender, asexual. Uh, then this guy's got yeah, the right idea, but he's the uh, names. But I'm like pretty sure how seen like there. videos and everything on like different genders like here. So for me, gender is like a construct because gender isn't something that's that's made up. Um, so sex is something that's biologically given to us so i don't really know to be honest what do you identify with a uh, male male okay so the second way that i think and that was it that was his ex that was his example video at how confused people are what is he worried about everybody interviewed was nice they seemed perfectly content they were polite and respectful. And he's like, look at this. It's a disaster. The whole community's going to fall apart. And it was like a series of vox pops of people being like, yeah, this is what I think. And I understand that other people might think differently. Oh, God, imagine. Oh, the nightmares. Children are being raised to be so understanding and compassionate and willing to learn about other people and God, what a nightmare. Bloody Satan. We're team Satan so far. Let's look at number two. I think that the enemy is really doing a number on this next generation is through technology. And while I believe that technology can be an amazing tool that can help us connect with loved ones and uh, do better. Yeah, I fucking see what you did there, Alan. It doesn't make it less obnoxious just because you acknowledge it with a see what I did there at school and access information a lot quicker. I also think that if it is misused and misplaced, I think it can do more damage than good. And let me give you six ways it can do this. Number one is through uh, pornography. And that's the idea that these youth have access to inappropriate websites in ways that people in my generation never were able to have access to it. And you I think a lot of pornography is very harmful. I think that ultimately this is the responsibility of parents in the household. There are family settings on computers and internet restrictions. That's a parent thing. I don't know where exactly the devil is involved. Is the devil controlling pornography directors? Is the devil controlling pornography websites? Is he just, is the whole porn industry the devil? Like what is, is, is the devil encouraging kids to watch pornography like where does the devil come in i'm trying to understand where this information on the devil is coming in this feels like top seven things i consider harmful for the youth today but he's just slapped satan on the cover to make christian parents afraid you've heard me say this before but it's the three a's it's accessible it's affordable and it's anonymous nobody knows that they're doing it it's affordable, they don't have to pay for it, and it's accessible, it's right there on their phones. Not if you have the appropriate safety re restrictions. One way that I think technology is really, um, really doing a number on our generation. And but how does that relate to Satan? And then the next way would be uh, just making them lazier because everything is easy for them to access. It's right at their fingertips. They don't have to actually go to the library and use the card catalog. They don't have to- This is such an old school, like the idea that because you don't have to physically walk to the library, everybody's lazy. It's like if people are looking something up online that they previously would have had to go to the library for, what is the difference beyond it being more accessible? Like, I love libraries. Grew up going to the library, it's top. My local library is only open during work hours, so I can never go. Fortunately, I can access texts and things via the internet, so I get to learn the same amount. Like, if children are seeking out the same information, how is that making them lazier? Just because they're not walking to the library? I've heard this so many times and I just don't fucking understand it. It feels like proper old man, it's different than when I was young kind of thinking, you know? sift through different books to get information and to research all you have to do is go to google and you can find out anything that you want and as a result that's leading to decreased attention spans with our youth another way is that it is decreasing their writing skills 
because if they're texting all the time and then they try to use that type of text language whenever they're writing their resume or writing a, a story. Sh <laughs> show me one example. I mean, don't show me one example because you could find one example. But like where? I, forget, I would have seen this news story. This would have been a fucking Sun article, you know, kids using text language in their essays it's an unprecedented disaster technology's ruining children this has never happened he's making this up he's like well kids text also nobody even texts like that anymore granted i'm 26 so maybe teenagers are texting like that again now using you instead of you has gone out of fashion why is this stock person typing in cap hi how are you why are they yelling the first part why not see a film together oh my god they've shortened some of the words the the communities the devil it's all going to hell like what like fuck me this is so much this is so like this is such pedantic bullshit this is completely invented this is not a thing that's happening there are more kids going on to further education than ever before. There are so many more writers than there used to be. There is no issue with people writing in text speak. And if that was how language was evolving, then who the fuck cares? But it's not. It's again, it's just made up like, oh my god, my kids are going to come across all unintelligent because of the internet. This is bullshit. Story or an article or a paper it doesn't translate well. And so children are spending hours of their day texting and they think that is formal communication. No, they don't. No, they, kids don't think texts are formal communication. I'll, go and ask a kid right now, Alan. Prove this to me. Do they think that shortening words to like the letters U and C in a text message is formal communication and would they write that in an essay? You're fucking lying. That's just a lie, and it's a stupid one, because who cares? Another way is uh, messing up or really destroying their interpersonal skills with people, because you see youth coming together, and they're texting each other, sitting right next to each other, or they're texting their friends, and they're not even spending time talking to each other, right? And so I think that... This can all be shortened to mobile phone bad. I am old man. No phone when I grow up. Mobile phone bad. Kids kids use phone phone bad. We've dealt with this a million times. Can we please move on to something a little bit more adult and based in reality? Please. And it is really doing a number. And what the fuck has this got to do with Satan? Is Satan making kids shorten words in their text messages? Of course not. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this is so stupid hindering them from being able to actually have healthy interpersonal skills. And then finally, it's a distraction. When you have kids that are playing video games for three or four hours a day or just surfing the web or whatever, it is a huge distraction from other more important things. And that leads me to the third way that I- Again, that's about parenting. You know, when you were a kid, there were hours worth of distractions too. Just because it wasn't being on the internet on a computer doesn't mean you could have couldn't have distracted yourself for three hours instead of doing more important things like I don't know, probably he means like reading the Bible or going to church or worshiping God or whatever whatever more important things he thinks of that's just about parenting it's about having a bit of discipline and setting time aside for different things also using the internet and just putting that all in one thing discounts the fact that like you said earlier, you can use it to access loads of information. You can use it to do your schoolwork. You can use it to develop your interpersonal skills. Like, the internet as a big bad, especially from a Christian channel, is such a fucking hacky old school bit of bullshit that I'm so surprised how many people are falling for this. Again, based on the comments, it's purely out of fear. It's, oh god, yeah, I'm terrified. That thing you said sounds really scary, actually. I am worried about my children now. And, like, what he's saying is bullshit. I'm actually kind of angry. <laughs> I believe that the enemy is attacking our youth and that is through social media. So experiencing- Part three then, or number three, is uh, an extension of number two. Things like cyberbullying, where kids are being threatened for their lives from people who are sitting behind keyboards. And you also have issues of identity where particularly young women are getting their identity from posting pictures on social media. We've heard it all before. It's like, it's rehashing a load of old fears. Yes, social media and kids' identities and cyberbullying, it all is genuinely 
a serious problem, the way we manage it needs to be reconsidered. It's all, it's all real, it's all stuff that we should be focused on. Just brushing it aside and saying the devil and then like, I don't know, banning your kids from social media, that doesn't solve anything. Just being like, this, this is stuff, there's no nuance to it, there's no discussions to be had, there's no way we can improve it. It's the devil. Be afraid. Like, what are you, how are you helping? What are you helping to solve? All you're doing is making people afraid and creating scapegoats and straw men out of the internet. And they are assessing whether they are worthy or not based on how many likes or how many shares or how many times people comment and tell them that they are beautiful. But then not only this, many young people are actually being trafficked through their activity on social media from predators. And so I believe that social media is the third way that the enemy is attacking our youth. Again, like he's right. That's a terrible problem. It's something that, you know... The police need to be working on a lot better. But where does the where does the devil fit in? How does he know this is the devil? Give me some information about where the devil fits in here. But the fourth way specifically for this next generation is through mental illness. When we look at things like ADD and ADHD and depression and bipolar and anxiety and even rates of suicide, all these things are actually increasing in this generation, which lets us know that the enemy's activity is to use these mental illnesses to confuse. It's, it's an oversimplification of the situation, right? You've got to factor in that over time, science improves, psychology improves, we understand mental illness better, and we are more open to discussing it. The fact that more people are being diagnosed doesn't necessarily mean that more people are suffering. By extension, I would say the fact that more people are being diagnosed with mental health issues, I don't see any correlation between that and the devil either. That seems... that seems like a bit of a leap, but then that seems like a leap on every single point that Alan has made. It's just more fear tactics. I'm just gonna keep saying that, I'm gonna say it 50 times, you can make fun of me. But the fact is, that's all it is. That's all this video is. So, there we go. Use and further pull our youth away from serving God and understanding their God-given purpose and worth. According to a recent report by the National Institute of Mental Health, it says that more than 15% of teenagers may develop depression before reaching adulthood. And then as it relates Therefore, Satan. It's to suicide in 2017, there were more than 6,200 suicide deaths among adolescents and young adults ages 15 through 24, making it the second leading cause of death for that age group behind unintentional motor accidents. It just, again, it's just like... Therefore devil. There's nothing about Satan in there. It doesn't make any sense. I'm also a bit concerned that he sort of phrased it like, and I'm sure he's very concerned genuinely with the health of children, but he phrased it like, the problem is Satan is affecting their mental health and therefore they're not spending time worshipping God. Attacking this next generation is through family dysfunction. Today, there are over 14 million homes that are affecting more than 28 million children who are growing up in single parent homes. This one is particularly funny just for me because, you know, it's the devil that is causing these family issues. Um, my dad stopped talking to me when he became a Christian. So I feel like it was actually God rather than the devil that caused, you know, the family destruction. I wonder what Alan thinks about that. Also, the lack of one or both parents in that child's life make that child subject to higher levels of depression, lack of education, higher risk of unhealthy sexual behaviors, drug and alcohol abuse, and so much more. Listen, we might just... That said a lack of parental guidance. It didn't say anything about being in a single parent household. I don't have his sources, I don't know specifically where his information is coming from, but it feels like he's making leaps again. Think that we are going through a divorce and you know what, our kids will be okay, but whenever a child goes through something traumatic as either growing up without a father in the home or going through a dysfunctional family situation, whether it may be divorce or something else, we are putting our children, our next generation, at a higher risk for- So why is that Satan's fault and why is that not- Because in this he's basically implying that it's fathers that leave. Why is that not the fathers that leave's fault? Why is it Satan? And is his solution just for 
people in unhappy or unhealthy relationships to just stay together for the children because that always works out really well that doesn't scar or traumatize children either like is it that parents you know when a couple is arguing and they've got kids are they supposed to watch this video and go the reason we've not been getting on the reason that i'm angry with you for sleeping with my sister is because of the devil it's the devil that's trying to split us up so we should just forget it all and stay together because otherwise our child will become a drug addict like hello <laughs> like the most old school classic fear tactics they're gonna turn to drugs and unhealthy sexual desires and ooh, just if you get divorced don't do it for all sorts of attacks that the enemy wants to unleash on their life and they will ultimately more than likely cycle that into their next generation unless they make different changes in their lives. Number six is this area of sex before marriage. Based Ooh. on a recent support, over 39.5%. Did he say based on a recent support? It's not, that's not a valid criticism. I make word mistakes all the time. It's very fun and silly, but that made me laugh. Based on a recent report. Again, don't know where this um, is coming from. I'm assuming it's specifically focused in the USA. He doesn't give us any of that information, so I've just got to extrapolate and hope for the best. And of all students in high school report to being sexually active. And then in another report, of the 20 million sexually transmitted diseases this past year, more than half of them were from people in the age group of 15 to 24. We've talked about this before. We've talked about this before. I think regarding the transformed wife on um, the issue of sex before marriage and abstinence. And abstinence education does not work. Sexually transmitted diseases in young people could be solved by proper sex education, which these people also think is bad, proper sex education and access to birth control. That's how you stop that. You don't stop that by preaching abstinence because you know for a fact that doesn't work. We actually have a solution for this. It's nothing to do with God or the devil. It's about good education and access to healthcare. Problem solved. But no, it's sex before marriage. It's the bad. Oh, it's very naughty. You shouldn't do it. You just get, terrify your children into not having sex. That will work forever. And then they'll never get an STD. My friends, this is getting worse and the enemy is using sexual temptation he's using this sexualized culture he's using the normalcy of the lgb oh now we're bringing queer people into it now now suddenly the lgbtq plus community is responsible for premarital sex love to know where you got that information from alan because that rainbow flag appeared before he started talking i did like a double take of where the fuck is this going because <laughs> i paused it so suddenly lgbtq lifestyle and everything that goes along with that to lifestyle again the lgbtq lifestyle this is uh, like a 50 year old man's view of modern life. It's like queer people equals sex before marriage, right? And people having pride parades and saying, hello, I'm just a person, please respect my sexuality and gender. That means that children are getting STDs. Like where, where are you drawing these, <laughs> these conclusions from? Where are these lines coming from? That was a very cheap way of not having LGBTQ plus people as one of his Satan attacks, but winding it in in the um, in the sex before marriage one because your children might be queer and therefore get STDs is like such a fucking old hack fear tactic that I loathe. Alan, hey Alan, I'm queer. I hang out with a lot of queer people. I observe the queer lifestyle personally. Queer lifestyle hasn't involved ever getting an STD. Um, I don't know what the the lifestyle exactly you think it is, but but basically it's um it's the lifestyle where we are people and would like basic respect. So if that's a lifestyle you don't want your children to be a part of, then I'm a little bit concerned about what you're teaching them. To confuse and to attack and to ultimately destroy our youth. And then the seventh and certainly not final way that I believe the enemy is attacking our youth is through drugs and alcohol. Today, about 21% of high school students admit to using drugs on a regular basis and 41% of them admit is it on a regular basis? That's not what the text says. Again, I don't have his sources. To using alcohol on a regular basis. And these are only the ones who actually admitted it in a survey. So my friend, I believe that these are the seven ways. Like I that, he didn't say anything. He didn't even have a point there. 
children are having alcohol. That's what you do when you're a kid. If it's <laughs> if some preachy parent pastor i don't know what does he think he is a minister if you're getting preachy sermons about something that you shouldn't do at any cost that's what makes kids want to do it i said my intent in this video was not necessarily to solve it but really to it wasn't remotely to solve it you don't need to say necessarily you didn't provide any solutions for any of the problems at all you can be you can be plain about that alan just let you know and to pull the 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 the, uh, from the, your eyes. the curtains back the and curtains to truly back. Exp he changed his mind for some reason halfway through that and it made me confused expose the tactics and the strategies of the enemy as he is unleashing a specific attack against our youth citation needed i there was no evidence of the devil specifically attacking youth anywhere in that. That was just a video of stuff that Alan considers to be bad for young people based on his prejudices and like extrapolating information in a misleading way and adding fucking cheeky music to a perfectly nice interview. Now the question is, when we see these things happening in our youth, in this next generation, in our children's lives, in lives of students in our youth groups, and people in our community, in our neighborhoods, what are we as adults going to do about it? So I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think are the most- I would love to leave a comment down below. I've not done this for a while. Fuck it, let's do it. I've not left a comment down below for a little while. Hey Alan, great production quality on this video. I'm a little confused based on the title. Watching the entire video, I found no evidence or correlation even between these events and the devil. As far as I can tell, this is a list of seven things you consider harmful to youth based on your own slightly outdated prejudices. Where is the link between these things and Satan? What benefit does repeating statistics from small studies, in a misleading and misrepresentative way, provide, other than provoking worried parents into feeling afraid? This is a terrific example of Christian fear tactics with no real depth. Particularly egregious is the section of Vox Pops regarding gender identity. Adding clown-esque music to the background doesn't change the actual content from being a small sample size of young people speaking out their respect for those who identify differently than themselves. Is the implication that children being more considerate and understanding is a problem, fueled by the devil himself? I strongly suspect I won't hear Alan's thoughts, but it's always worth a try, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> that was, uh, that was kind of fun. It's kind of infuriating. These things always are. There's no basis in fact. And I know, I know we're talking about religion. It's faith. You can't explain faith with facts. But if you're trying to imply that these are the specific things that the motorbike, these are the specific things that the devil is doing to hurt children. And then he's just sort of making up whatever he wants. That's not, that's not a good way to discuss whatever your faith is. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this just a little cheeky video just while I'm uh, moving about and shuffling around. I have something special coming out for Halloween. It's kind of a tradition at this point, so do stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, I will give a quick shout out to my giant chickens over on Patreon. Amalgam of Neuroses, Amber, Conla Chicken Maximus Lions, God damn it, Conla, Falcher Chair Ninja, Fulcrum, Gaming Ridge, Izzy, Lady Ray, Lizzie Gale, Mr. Creosote, Nick Hook, Ninja Red, Taxman, the guy from that thing you liked, and Wasatch Witch. Thank you so much for your support. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to see more and you enjoyed this video. Do share it. Leave your thoughts down below. If you don't know what to say in the comments, just put the enemy. Let's try and make light of these crazy, harmful, fear-inspiring videos because making parents and by extension young children terrified for their souls is just not cool in my opinion. It's just not cool. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.